Hey guys, it's Taylin, and today we're talking about things companies can do to lose their online reputation. So I love a good chick flick as much as the next girl, and one of my favorites is How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. And it's actually one of my boyfriend's favorite movies too, which is a little weird, but I've gotten used to it. Um, if you're not familiar with the movie, it's about this magazine writer in New York, Andy, and she writes columns about how to do something in 10 ways. And for the movie, she's writing a column about how to get a guy to dump you in 10 days. And the guy that she chooses for this experiment is an advertising executive who's trying to get a big diamond account. And he makes a bet with his boss that he can get a woman to fall in love with him in 10 days. And if he wins the bet, then he gets the account. You can guess what happens. They all um, do everything that they can to win their bets. There's diamonds in it. There's really bad karaoke in it. There's a really good ending that's completely unrealistic. It's everything you could want in a chick flick. Um, and so going off of that, I've channeled my inner Andy and I've come up with a list of how to lose your online reputation in 10 ways. The first thing you can do is to have a sloppy website. And this includes everything from slow load times to unclear navigation, to bad copy, to cheesy stock photos. Um, consumers in the digital age know what a website should look like. They know how it should act. And if you give them something that they're not expecting, they're gonna abandon your site for someone else's. Take the time to work with a developer and really think about your user experience and you shouldn't have a problem. Number two is not engaging with your audience. And on social media, you really want to engage with your followers the way you would engage with your personal followers on your personal accounts. And this just means responding with human responses. Let them know that there is somebody behind that company. It's not just a robot churning out stuff to get them to a website. Um, so if somebody responds to you, just send them back a quick message. Make sure that it's friendly. You can include smiley faces if you want, if that goes with your brand's voice. Um, just don't do like a static, thanks for your reply, insert keyword here, link to my website. That's not what people want. They want someone real. That leads me to my next point, number three, not having a social filter. And like I said, you want to engage with your followers on a personal level but you don't necessarily want to post things that you would post on your personal account. There are a ton of examples of companies or even prominent people in companies posting inappropriate content and getting in a ton of hot water for it. So you really need to be careful, have that filter. If necessary, run your comment by someone else if you're trying to go a little edgy or a little sarcastic and make sure that it resonates with other people because you don't wanna accidentally get yourself in a lot of trouble. Number four is having inconsistent posting. And this is good for your blog and your social channels. Um, basically, if I go into a blog and I see that it hasn't been updated in months, or if I see that I'm following someone on social media and they haven't posted anything in a few weeks, I'm gonna unfollow them because I don't want any extra clutter. And seeing that you're not con consistent with your posting tells me that you're lazy or you don't care about what you're doing or that you have bad time management skills. So you really need to make an effort to have an editorial calendar in place, to follow that editorial calendar, and have a social media posting schedule, whether it's two tweets in the morning, two tweets at night, uh, four tweets throughout the day, anything like that. Just make sure that you follow your schedule. Number five is abandoning your social profiles. And it's pretty common. Companies try out a new social media site and they realize it doesn't really work for them and what they're trying to do. But if there's not a lot of links back to your site, you probably want to just delete that account. Because like I said before, if I land on your account and I see nothing's on there, I'm gonna think that you're out of business or that you just can't keep up with what you're doing. And neither, neither of those things reflect well on you. So like I said, unless there's a ton of links back to your site, you might wanna just get rid of it. Number six is buying followers. This is a huge no-no, I shouldn't have to say it, but it's still happening, unfortunately. Um, and I understand the pressure to build a community and get a lot of credibility on social media, but buying followers is not the way to do that. Um, and it's really obvious to see when someone has bought followers, so just don't even think about it. Number seven is not having a blog. Um, this is the age of content. Companies that do have blogs are constantly competing with each other to get customers. Companies that don't have blogs are not even in the race. So you need to get a blog as soon as possible. Number eight is having an inconsistent brand voice. 
And you really should have gotten together with your PR and marketing teams before you started your blog or started your social media channels and thought about the voice that you want your company to have. For example, companies like Hamburger Helper, Oreo, Taco Bell, they are really funny. They post a lot of really funny kind of quirky content and it works for them. But if a B2B tech company tries to start doing that out of the blue, that's going to be really weird. So if you don't, if you don't have a brand voice, um, pause the video, go get with your team, figure one out, then come back and finish the video. Number nine is to ignore negative reviews online. Um, this is a big problem for some companies. They think that if they just don't look at it, it will go away or it'll get covered by positive reviews. And that's not always the case. Um, I remember at Christmas when there was all the ice going on and a lot of shipping companies were getting packages late to their customers. People were not happy and they were all over social media about it. And some of the companies thought the best choice was to disable comments. So people didn't have the option to be negative. And that really just made people more upset. So it's best to just have a strategy in place for responding to a negative review. And if something happens, you've got a solid strategy that you're not planning in the moment. Finally, number 10 is sharing irrelevant content. If I sign up for emails about marketing information, I don't wanna get emails about sports scores. That's not what I'm interested in. Like I said, this is the age of content. Every company is putting out information for me. So if you're giving me what I don't want, I'm gonna unsubscribe and I'm gonna go to someone who will give me what I want. There you have it, a list of 10 surefire ways to lose your online reputation. In case it wasn't clear, don't do any of these things and you should be good. Thanks guys.